Well, I was gonna say, well, we in Uruguay we do a lot of software, but we're not so acquainted. I mean, we're not so known for that, mostly for football. We are quite known because of that, and people is crazy about football. Really crazy about football. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know that one. Yeah, uh, I don't know what's that madness anyway. But uh, the reason uh, we would like to talk today was because of testing. So, going back to our talk, um, I would like you to, to invite you to think about how you do testing. Yesterday, on your talk, most of you get, got up and said, okay, we test our code, basically. Well, I, I would like you uh, to think, take this, Sunday morning to think a little bit about your process, what you're doing, because uh, in the recent years we have been like uh, flooded or bombarded of about many methodologies, concepts, gems, and different types of activities that may be uh, regarding testing, programming, but all in all we, we have to let's say, okay, how, how can we order all these concepts, these ideas. And basically, uh, the best label for that would be agile software development. Uh, who does any type of uh, agile development? Uh, Scrum or XP or XP? Yeah. Waterfall, anyone? I'm sorry that you are doing waterfall, perhaps you can then switch to another methodology which is usually more comfortable. But if you are doing uh, waterfall, it's okay. The, the main, the key issue in Agile is um, about what's most important, do it first. And what's about that? What's the most important thing for Agile? Well, as the very first principle of Agile is deliver valuable software. So, if you do testing, the only reason you are doing testing is to deliver a valuable uh, product, okay? Not just for having tests written. Let's see that testing shouldn't be a, ver uh, uh, um, a barrier to deliver software, but like a warranty of what you're delivering is high quality. And this principle, Agile principle, let's uh, ask us ourselves about which are our, our needs as developers, but also to take into consideration the customer. Okay? Um, what about the customer? Well, we have to put ourselves into the context of the customer and Usually, he, he might think about three things, essentially. Uh, first of all, uh, these three things, put it together, bring the value, okay? That's the value that the customer would like to see because he wants some product, uh, a certain set of features, we will call that working code, uh, he also wanted for some day, it could be applied to any software. And at the bottom line, he also will be looking for how many uh, hours did it take, because usually uh, I'm doing consultancy, I guess, or outsourcing services. Mo mostly of the time, you sell hours of development. And that translates very simply to, uh, to money and to a lot of money. So he usually is concerned to a different level of uh, sensibility, okay? No, uh, about, okay, how much, how long will it take? How much will it cost? Okay, and I, like it. I would like it to work. That's uh, the thing about that. So when we usually prepare the program, the, the, the customer will expect it to work. But the fact is, how are we going to uh, say, okay, it works? We, shall we say, okay, I, I said it works 
Uh, I swear it go, it works. No. <laughs> who, who on earth, who on earth uh, that is uh, professional would do that? Actually, no. And this is where it comes uh, a very nice idea that is acceptance testing. Like, okay, I have done my work, and then will come SQA and like certify or verify that it does complain, com it's compliant with the set of features that the customer asks. Okay? So, if we're going, as a programmer, if I'm going to develop my features, I would like to give the customer uh, not, not only the working code, but some kind of warranty that this code under certain condition works. And that's why you need to think about the idea that you're not only putting, uh, let's say, working code. That is, the, that is the part that the customer actually pays for, the, 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 the easy, far, easy part to quantify. Yes, you also have to think that it's like a coin, like you have the working code, on the other side you have tests, automated tests, or a, any type of process to guarantee that it's, a, it's something of value. Yes? So, question would be, uh, okay, we have to build valuable software. Uh, um, what, what, what would be the approach? Well, uh, um, an approach that was developed 20 years ago, or something like that, uh, was called design by contract. Perhaps you may hear, have heard of it or not. It was um, a term by me, uh, created by Mayer that said, okay, people usually do contracts to set clearly what are the responsibilities and the rights. And then he said, okay, let's try to apply the same context, the same concept to code. So you will have somehow uh, the code we're producing is going to be uh, checking for conditions to enforce a contract, a written contract. Well, if every contract would work, we wouldn't need lawyers, that's for sure. But in simple words, well, what Mayer suggested, a set of rights and responsibilities that was about uh, when you invoke a function, what's the context before the, the invocation of the function? What should be the, the, act, the, the outcome or what should happen after the function was invoked? And uh, what should be uh, happening while the function works? So uh, to put a, an example, perhaps uh, quite simple, um, if you have a a function that is user create, uh, like Rails, an active model, you may think of what uh, Mayer thought that, uh, 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 you can think, precondition, something that you expect before the, the method is invoked, like no passing no empty parameters. Then you would like something as an output. You can think of a new instance of user or perhaps an exception or other type of errors regarding, okay, I couldn't create the object. And there were some uh, ideas that were, okay, let's use uh, invariants that say, while I'm working, while I'm calling the function, if I, what I have is a reference to the params object, you, that shouldn't be modified by other threads. I think that in Rails is, I mean, it's not really going to happen, but, or to lose the database connection while we're doing the, the method. So, uh, seems like you're not convinced about this idea. That's okay. Actually, uh, the problem with the same bank contract was that uh, there were very few implementations because in theory, sound okay, but in practice was uh, not so used. We have Eiffel, we have uh, Java assert. Java, does someone still works on Java? Yeah. Well, it's nice, this nice thing that is the assert that you actually, when, when producing the bytecode, you can say, okay, 
assert disabled, assertions disabled. So why would you use it if you're going to disable them anyway? So, and also uh, there was an approach in Ruby to introduce this concept, but was, I mean, lost in translation, like sometimes I feel here when, <laughs> because of not knowing the language. So besides this idea, uh, we have to think about something else. This is, was a interesting approach, didn't work. Um, other ideas was, okay, let's write some code, that very fast code, probably is what you are, go you are doing right now. Those uh, of you probably working with test unit or aspect or any other um, test, uh, test, test product, let's say, we are focusing on what's the output of a uh, software. Um, you would like it to be repeatable in order to do it as many times as possible in the same conditions, kind of scientific approach. Um, the other thing which is most interesting is you would like to avoid uh, breaking functional code when introducing new features. So that's important to, to do the regression. So very much that idea in mind, we, oh, uh, it was introduced in the community so many years ago, the automatic testing concept, which are all quite familiar, no? See? No? Tac. Okay, so the first approach to this was JUnit, was created also uh, a lot of time ago by Beck and Gamma, Eric Gamma. By that time, I don't know, uh, it's, uh, it's quite an, an old, but the, the most standard feature about uh, doing unit testing. That was the first approach to, uh, to testing, automated testing, that is, Separate components, small objects, without relation to, to its environment, without network connections, without nothing. And the, the idea of test cases, the situations that you will try on the object where, or start. And, the, and then when you have a bunch of test cases, you have a suite. And that idea was proposed a little bit further when uh, uh, the same back proposed, okay, let's do test-driven development. Yeah. Uh, I think for yesterday, many of you are quite familiar with test-driven, behavior-driven. Let's focus on test-driven development for now. And the idea first was, uh, okay, what uh, about if we, instead of programming, deploy, develop, uh, deploying it to a station server, asking SQA to, to test it for us. What if we wrote tests about uh, the features we are going to do before it? So this is not rocket science, but the key issue that made this work was actually that uh, requirements or features are really concise. So the, to get a feature concise, you need to have a lot of analysis. You cannot just have a, a vague idea, yeah, I would like uh, uh, to manage documents, okay? You, you need something quite concrete, and that's one of the best things of the test-driven development idea. And of course, we will do uh, validations through tests. Yeah, but what's the idea behind of this? Um, it actually, it's about uh, um, a proposed idea that's a little bit older. Perhaps you know this person. Well, about 40 years ago, he was saying, okay, you should do some validation of the correctness that the code works while programming. Um, and what's that? Because it's, uh, we, will, we will see it very soon, okay? But it, it, it wasn't really that Beck invented test-driven test development out of nothing. It was his experience doing the unit testing and some other experience that was a little bit older for that. So, 
this uh, who knows what this about somebody knows about this okay I will try to be brief so the proposed method to that can come out for test driven development was okay let's first write a test that fails to test our f future functionality then we wrote a little bit of code to make it pass and then we write another test make it fail and try to make it pass with the smallest amount of code and in this cycle he was very ins insist a lot of refactoring okay once you have done the smallest amount of code review what you could uh, basically remove duplicates remove um, coupling etc and that goes got us to the most the two most problematic issues with uh, the cycle the TDD cycle the first actually no refactor so what's the problem if you have a lot of small requirements and you don't keep up with the refactoring you start to stack up a lot of uh, technical debt issues okay uh, and that's a problematic but after three months of development you end up with some code that really you don't know it's like a, a jungle okay that's uh, one of the problem with introducing poor design because of no refactoring and the other thing uh, that he, he insisted a lot was okay this uh, system makes sense when you get instant feedback he talked about instant feedback uh, some uh, from the, the realities that we are rails usually takes about 20 perhaps 30 seconds to to boot up when you're starting aspect with bundler with it, it may depend on, on your environment but just for that it's not really instant okay uh, I know I don't know did you try any C++ or other frameworks for testing not in Ruby C++ somebody or yeah well you you tried also tests in C++ and CPP unit. yeah there are a lot of X units like after J unit came out was net uh, N unit and everything else but the thing is for instance C++ when you run a test a unitary test it's really fast and why it's fast because usually it's isolated from the background yeah um, we will get back to Ruby so the thing about this cycle and the way of working is actually that um, it's an heuristic it's not really the perfect way to do it is a possible path to get a good result so as any heuristic is it's very plausible to be wrong okay so if you try to do the, this test cycle TDD cycle and it doesn't work for you because you're getting bored for instance if you get bored you distract you lose concentration you so perhaps not doing that cycle like okay I write a test I wait for, for, to run and then I write the code and run again and run again and run again perhaps it's not the best way to solve the issue and the other thing he, al he also intended to see is okay we can think of, of tests testing in many scales yes and the, the most important way okay like typical J unit or X unit uh, products we're focusing on single component okay no relations no uh, not even interaction with the database and then came the second layer which was called it's a, it's clear um, okay the idea is that uh, then you can try to put your component interacting with other components like I don't know you have uh, uh, most of the tests we're doing on rails are mostly about integration 
And then it comes the, according to BDD, Behavioral Driven Development, the most important tests, which are those that mimic what the user does, okay? The typically, um, Shalinsky wrote in, the, in his book about using cu cucumber, for instance. Well, th the, real, the real thing is there are plenty of ingredients, tools, or in order how to make your, how to prepare your, your favorite recipe for uh, testing. But I would just like to uh, focus on ASPEC. That is actually what we use in Kubox for doing uh, every type of testing. I mean, uh, mostly integration and acceptance. Yes, we don't use cu Cucumber, we use ASPEC. Um, and about ASPEC, you know, it's uh, easy to integrate with Rails. It's actually out of the box. It's really uh, easy to get started with. Um, of those who were yesterday said that we're doing testing, who's using ASPEC to test models, for instance? I would say about 30, 40 percent, perhaps, of the people here. Okay, great. Well, we also use it for acceptance, yes? Okay, or oh, cucumber? Okay, we don't. <laughs> uh, uh, the other thing that you might find a little bit confusing is, depending on the author you're referring to, you may have to think about uh, acceptance testing or integration testing, and when using, for instance, uh, Capybara Selenium driver, you have enough to uh, to talk about, okay, that's enough to do acceptance testing with the Selenium driver and Capybara, for instance. Sometimes even it's not necessary uh, Selenium, uh, Selenium. But that's the basic thing about it. So, in race we have a lot of stuff to test. Basically, what it's properly from the application and what would be other services like integration to Twitter, Facebook, other APIs, or other components that you will use, I don't know, device, somebody authenticates with device here, device, oh, quite a lot. Interesting for, for the Brazilian people. So, uh, oh, other things uh, can be perhaps component at, uh, J, uh, at JavaScript level for to do graphics. We use, I don't know, high charts, for instance, as a component. And when you like to, to think about how is uh, our entire suite of tests, we came out with this reality. We, we try to look at it. Can you see the, the unit tests there? No, you cannot see because it's quite complicated to do unit tests in the sense of isolated components, okay, in Rails. You actually, you have to focus more on integration or even acceptance. And that's fine. That's fine. It's not, uh, it's not, you know, it's not uh, a bad idea. The problem is when these things start to take a long time. So when we run ASPEC, perhaps you may use, uh, I don't know, like a formatter, for instance, like run it with color to see all nice tiny red dot uh, or green dots. You may try other th stuff to, to get more instant feedback about how, how this is running. For instance, we use FUBAR. There are many formatters out there. I would suggest you to to look into some formatters. Um, I also uh, will say, okay, some of our tests are running slow, slow. Uh, when you run with profile the, the entire su suite, you may see the 10 slowest tests. It's not enough, but it's a good first thing to, to think about. Um, there are other gems related we try to use to uh, improve a little bit the daily, uh, the, the daily work, yes. We may, for, for instance, use auto, 
auto test. So you can run the, the suite in background. Yeah. And every time you modify a file, it's uh, going to be a, a auto test should understand that that file was modified because was listening to changes in the file and run some of the tests that were related to that file, which is good. We also try to parallelize, uh, not talking about the CI server yet, but we may use SpecSure, for instance, to use more than one core and it quite works. But all in all, the result is, looks not so beautiful because you actually have some tests. This is a, a plot about the, the yes, yeah, difficult to see, but um, here we have the number of tests and on the, on the Y axis, we have the time in seconds. Uh, it's actually like the power law, but if you look into every detail, you can see that actually, like there are two types of sets within your, your test, test run. And the thing is that if you do RSpec profile, you will see just how that very edge has gone. And if you don't measure how long are taking the test, you are not going to be able to, okay, let's improve it, introducing, for instance, fixtures. Uh, I don't know, is anyone uh, of, uh, doing ours, like, is a machinist or using, I don't know, other type of factory? Yes, factory girl, mostly factory girl, okay. We don't use that, but it's great. If you use fixtures, it could be even faster to, to prepare the database. And um, the important thing is when you look at your test suite, is that you should spot, okay, understand which tests are slow because of Selenium, yeah? And which tests are slow because of other things. Like, okay, this test goes to Twitter to ask something and then uh, returns, yeah. That could be a bottleneck, and you have to take that into consideration. So uh, regarding what we do test, well, when we were testing models, we usually try to focus on the status of the object, the transitions, if you have event machine, micro machine, a state machine, okay? We also uh, try to test uh, specific methods that we know may handle uh, particular results. Uh, eventually, we may try to uh, control some association, like uh, typically it's a dependent destroy. We may introduce a, a test just to make sure it works. Perhaps we can even delete it afterwards. Or, uh, I don't know, other type of validations. Since we're not using Factory Girl, we have to validate that our, our factories uh, are creating valid objects. So we had tests for that. Uh, eventually, when talking about controllers, uh, we don't test controllers by itself. Why? Well, because a controller usually is going to be called by, uh, by the view Okay, well, I mean by the view. It's going to be called only when the user is interacting with the view. Okay, so it may more sense to see the complete big picture, not necessary to uh, just focus, okay, I get a 200 status, 404 status, okay? We, we actually don't test the roots that way. We used to use other gems that I like watchdog, but right now we are not doing that. Um, in the case, is this an API? Well, if the controller is an API, we will probably not test the controller, but test the service or the uh, object that is behind the controller, like an integration test, okay? If it's an API, an external API, to, we're not to going to be testing the controller. We're going to, to be testing the method, model method, or or service 
that gives you the list of customers, okay? We usually do this to simplify also the set so you don't get st stockpiling tests too much. And views, well, we usually do acceptance testing for everything that is clickable in the, in the screen or reachable to the user. That is uh, not rocket science. The good thing is that, for instance, other components, you should probably assume that they work, okay? You are not supposed to be uh, testing gems within your race project, okay? You should test them separately because you're, otherwise you're introducing more noise to your, pro, to, to your signal in the sense that, okay, but there is a component that has a bug or is my application logic that, may, that has a bug, okay? So you assume that they are correct. Most of the time they work okay or otherwise somebody else already reported a bug. So it's easy to spot that. Um, for instance, action mailer, you shouldn't test, I mean, if action mailer says deliver, you should assume it is delivered. Or otherwise, there's an error in configuration. Yes? And the last thing we do is, with other type of services, we just test connectivity, okay, in automated testing. Yes? We actually, for doing the integration tests, and eventually, the acceptance testing, we mock it. We don't use, we don't connect to Experian, we don't connect to Twitter, because that type of connection could be uh, introducing not only delay, but also uh, some kind of bug, because I don't know, if the connection to the network goes down, the, the test is going to be failing, and that's a false positive, I mean, it really shouldn't happen that way. So that's why we try to mock as much as possible every interface. Um, the last thing I would like to mention about is this, the Selenium driver. <laughs> so now, the good thing is, okay, when nowadays, um, perhaps it's going to be talked uh, that JavaScript uh, is like the future, many say, or, or will say. Um, I would agree, most of the time we're going to transfer logic, application logic, business logic to the browser, okay? And I know that Selenium does a lot of stuff trying to get things done, and that's slow, most of the cases. But the good thing is when you're running Selenium, you're actually testing what the user is really going to be using. Okay, we are using, it's okay to use WebKit, but the fact is the user is not going to be using WebKit. And the bugs, like you have to maintain or com typical issue, compatibility with Internet Explorer 6. <laughs> now, but okay, I mean, let's get real. Eventually that will go away, definitely. But besides that, the good thing is if we're moving our logic, to JavaScript, we need to have a, an environment similar to what the use, user is going to be using, okay? It's not enough like yesterday when we were talking about uh, controlling the environment, because you can choose which version of Ruby your service is going to be using, yes? You can choose it, and it's okay. You can say, okay, I know I'm not going to move from Re, uh, Enterprise Ruby, or whatever. But it's your choice. Out there, when the user uses his browser, his mobile, you are not going to suggest him, no, you should change your mobile because uh, resolution is not supported, or something like that. So it's important to emulate what the user actually does. And there is no silver bullet, bullet for a slow test suite. I would suggest you, even though that, if you have a test suite that takes more than five minutes, split it, okay? You cannot, as a developer, you shouldn't be spending more than five minutes making sure that all your tests run. If you have tests that take longer, perhaps you will consider, okay, I would not run them. I, 
have a server, a dedicated machine, a Travis CI, a Jenkins, <clears throat> to uh, run, the, let's say, the, the test that takes much longer. Like, I don't know, Selenium Grid? Have uh, anyone heard about it? Okay, that could be a, a nice alternative to use. The other thing important is, besides that, is, okay, as much as logic you could get out of Rails coupling, like not using inheritance for, from active record, you may eventually test it without the, the spec helper uh, standard that we use for Rails that boots up the Rails environment. So think about to uh, extract to refactor functionality into plain old Ruby objects. It's an idea similar to, to a Java. Um, the last thing is, uh, mock as everything as possible. I mean, no external calls. Just a smoke test to make sure, okay, there's connectivity, but avoid uh, as much as possible uh, that calls for when your test suite runs, okay? And an important thing is that applying testing, some people see, okay, it's like a, a wall to protect ourselves from bugs in order to give more quality. So how big should your test suit would be? So how, how long would you like to, the wall, this wall to be? Well, the, the bad thing is you continue to add test line, test code, test cases, continue, continue, and then there's a, a huge stack of tests to maintain. And if uh, your test suite is, you spend three hours fixing tests and one hour programming, you're actually not going to be really productive. So you have to keep the suite as small as possible. Okay, because uh, you're not going to uh, check every possible input, but if you try to uh, always try to compress what you're doing in your test, if it's already tested somewhere else, don't test it twice. Okay, um, all in all, the important thing is when we talk about uh, software development seriously, is that I'm funny at the same time is that uh, we should understand it is a process. So if you like to get somewhere, we would need to, okay, it's not that we are just passengers in a train on the rails path, but we actually have to be responsible for uh, the process we're following and to introduce the correct amount of testing that usually needs to be focused on the customer. You have to make understand the customer the importance of doing testing, but not overdoing it as anything, because the bottom line for the customer is he needs something working. And if you have to ask him, what shall we do? Would you like to work in software or, uh, or testing? He will say always, work in software. So you need to strike a balance between what the customer needs and what are your needs to produce an excellent work. Um, questions? We have five minutes, perhaps. Uh, one there. I, I repeat this, if, anyway. Okay, so it is really difficult to write unit tests for else. And when we use this law, we also change to increase uh, our unit tests. Okay. Okay, one, one question at a time. The first question was, it's difficult to do isolated component tests in Rails? Yes, because we it's, our code is usually very coupled with Rails. Uh, and the second question was, okay, uh, what shall we do? Uh, as I suggest, just, uh, no, you cannot do most of the unit tests, okay? You have to assume that do integration test, and as much, log as much logic you can throw out, for example, to slash live, okay? 
to make it a library or to decouple from, from Rails methods, okay, you can mock it. For instance, if all the functionalities to search models, okay, you extract that and have a separate module, you could uh, eventually mock those invocations to the models. Um, uh, there is no solution right now. What shall we do in decoupling things and, and focus on the BDD movement that says, okay, let's do integration, let's do acceptance. I'm sorry. No. Yes? No, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, most of our models, for instance, are uh, have in inheritance as a pattern. Most of the things we use from from uh, Rails are an in the inheritance pattern. Okay, you inherit from Active Record Base. You inherit from uh, act, uh, action, everything is an action something, okay? And you inherit from it. So if we like to uh, separate that, we should need to, um, like, I don't know, we have to change rails or we either have to use Sinatra or these other type of technologies. For what it is, we cannot change that much. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, actually, it's not. It's a, a choice of design. It's nice that active record methods are useful to execute, but actually, it's a balance. You have to balance the benefits of using Rails and the cost of doing tests. Uh, okay. Question there. Uh, just a second. What the time? Uh, oh, almost there. So yes, two more questions. And that's yeah, seems it works. And my question is about uh, your suggestion, do not use integration testing. But uh, if uh, you are developing, developing an API application, uh, what, how you will use acceptance testing in this uh, case? Uh, I didn't understand the part. Yeah, if, if you develop uh, the user interface application, yeah. like uh, some simple or uh, complex uh, website. Yeah. Uh, acceptance testing is okay because Selenium web driver will click on all buttons, will, f uh, will fill uh, text fields with data. Okay. Uh, it's okay. But if you are developing an API, uh, for example, for, for iPhone, uh, the interface will be an iPhone application and uh, your website will be just an API. Uh, how it will work in this case if you are, do not uh, agree with using integration test? Uh, okay. Uh, um, re uh, let me rephrase it. Okay. Let's say you have one one function that is okay. Uh, the user list. Okay. That function usually is not necessary at the controller. I mean the logic. I wouldn't implement it in the controller even if it is an API, okay? So, uh, if you like to have a mock and, okay, let's say, call it, because you need the 400 status, the 403 status, or the, two ha the status, then it makes sense that you uh, test integration, do an integration test for that, because you are actually expecting, expecting a complete output, okay? Like if you're like to, to the status and the response, it makes sense that you test that because that's part of your API, okay? So, any other question? Well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>